Hi guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to the channel. And my furry feline Raven is right here. You can see her little paws here on the screen. She just jumped up on the couch. She's wondering what I'm doing because I'm in a different spot. I'm in my living room in front of the window. I've got all the lights turned on. I've got my little stand light here. So I hope this lighting helps. It's much better to do this in the daytime. So here we go. This is a short tutorial on that little granny square border I just posted on the community page the other day. This is the granny square I made. This is 10 rows of just a simple granny square. This is a four weight yarn and I used, I believe, a six millimeter hook to do this. I'm going to show you how to put the border on after I show you how to start this. Now I'm not going to show you how to start an actual granny square just like this. It's pretty simple. There are lots of tutorials on how to make granny squares but what I do is I chain three and then I do two double crochets in that first chain and then I chain two for the corner, three more double crochets in that same center chain, two double crochet, or I mean sorry, chain two for the corner three more double crochet, chain two for the corner, three more double crochet, and then I chain one, and then I single crochet into the top of that first chain three that I started, and then I chain three, do two double crochets. I don't chain in anything, I immediately just do another three double crochets in the next space, and I just keep going after I do my chain two for the corner. That's how I do my granny squares. I believe I might have done a short tutorial on how to do a granny square. Um, if not, I will upload one of those soon on the channel. But I'm going to show you how to do a granny square lovey with, um, with using a hair tie. I learned this a while back. I would say, I don't know, maybe about six months ago on, on another, another channel. This hair tie is actually not that good. Sometimes these will break in half. Uh, yep. So that hair tie is no good. I'm going to toss that and get another one. <clears throat> Here we go. This one's much better. So um, examine your hair tie. Make sure it, it makes sure the seal looks strong enough. Because you do want this to last a little bit. And what this is going to do is make your lovey washable. Machine washable and dryable without the stuffed toy in the center getting burned. So today I'm using just Chanel. 65 yard skein. It's by Premier. I got this from the Dollar Tree. 60 meters, 1.76 ounces, 50 grams. This is 100% polyester. Because this is a bulky number six, I'm using my 8 millimeter furls crochet hook today. You can't see it, but it's stamped in. It says M 8.0 mm F U R L S. And the bottom line says. I can't read what the bottom says. Can you see that stamped engraving? That's what it says. It's an 8 millimeter though. I can't really make out the word on the bottom. Maybe you can. But anyways, um, you can also use, of course, a 4 medium worsted weight yarn. This is basic acrylic from Premier that I bought at the Dollar Tree. I like to use um, uh, six millimeter for the four weights. It gives the lovey a little bit better of a drape. It's not so thick and bulky. Um, what I used to make this granny square with, by the way, was another one of these deals I got from one of my yarny friends and some of my last Happy Mail. It's really, really nice acrylic to work with. It's a four worsted weight yarn, and in some of it, it has these, this little fuzzy really small eyelash yarn. It's so nice and soft. It's got nylon in it. Or it feels like it has nylon in it. Let's see, this is the tag I used from the one I just crocheted up. What kind of fiber content did this have? Yeah, 78% acrylic, 22% nylon. So, so right there. Okay, so... Raven, it's okay. You've had your treat. You've had your breakfast. Mommy, do her tutorial for please. Pretty please. 
Okay, guys, let's get to this tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to make this. And this little llama is here because he's cute. I got them in the mail from that um, from that game, um, Chewy or something. I don't know. I don't trust it because I think they're the ones that stole my credit card information. They didn't take off with anything, but um, I pretty much got this for free in the mail. Free, I, I had to pay shipping, even though the shipping <laughs> said it was free. But anyways, I'm rambling on. Where'd that hair tie go? Okay, so today I'm using the Just Chanel. I'm going to make a levy with all four of these colors. The mint, the light blue, and the white. And I'm starting with the purple because it's the darkest. And I think it would help blend in the ponytail um, elastic band better. Now you can get these in different colors. They come in like a series of rainbow colors. They've got them in, in brown, white. So whatever color hair tie you want to pick up. And where's the end? Ooh, a center pull. It's not always easy to find a center pull with Chanel yarn. Let me make sure it's not going through the... Yep, okay. That's the outside going through the inside. What a bummer. Okay. Let me find the end here. I appreciate you guys sticking around and listening to my rambling. So I immediately like to do my slip stitch. Or do my starting chain right there. And then I grab the hair tie. Wrap my yarn around my hand the way I like it, and I just go through. I go through the hair tie. I pull up a loop, and I slip stitch into that chain that I did. And then I chain one. And then now we do 36 single crochets in this entire loop. 36 single crochets. So, one, two, and take your time. It's a little awkward working around a hair tie because we don't work around these too often. So, take your time with it. Make sure your thumb is right in line below your hook. Some hooks, as you know, don't have... Um, don't, they don't have those little flat little thumb grips, spaces right here. Raven, stop. Just playing with the lovey I'm trying to show you guys next. This is my tulip hook. It has like a little flat surface right there you can rest your thumb on. That is especially good for beginners so that your thumb um, doesn't roll off. Now, I may have to go back to these. I mean, I do use my tulips more frequently than my furls. But I love the furls so much. They're so gorgeous. And I like the way they feel in my hand. I'm trying not to let my thumb slip around. And sometimes it kind of trails off. But, but um, So just keep going with your um, single crochets. We're doing 36 of these, remind you. And if you're starting this for the first time, don't use Chanel. Use acrylic or cotton. I'm using Chanel because I'm familiar with doing these now as Chanel is more fuzzy and it is a little bit more difficult to count your stitches. But we're just going to do 36 single crochets. If we need, if we run out of room, we're just going to pull our band back like this and it will bunch these stitches up and give us more room to work. <clears throat> so once you've got 36 single crochets, hi baby. Your work should look like this. I have pre-prepared this. So I'm going to shorten my loop here. Okay. Make sure I'm orienting the correct way. Yes, I am. Okay, so in order to count these, you can spread these stitches up a little bit. Make sure you have good lighting and get close to this. So one, two, three, four, and so on until you get to 36, which is right here. And then, now this here is our chain one. We're not slip stitching into that. We want to go into our very first single crochet stitch, which is right here. So right from your 36 single crochet, Insert your hook, 
don't wrap your yarn over just insert your hook and into the those top two loops there we go you got two loops on your hook and then we're going to pull up a loop and then slip stitch and then I like to bring this tail up I will be working over this tail <clears throat> just a little bit I'm going to actually wrap it over and I'm going to work it into this chain here we are going to chain one you don't have to do this you can drop your tail and weave it in later I'm just doing it so I don't have to weave it in later one two three yarn over and do two more double crochets right there and that stitch that you just came out of there's one double crochet two double crochet skip two chains or two stitches skip two and to this third one yarn over and do three double crochets in that same loop I hope my background noise is not too bothersome I'm running my dishwasher I'm doing all sorts of things trying to play catch up today's my Friday I do have to go to work today unfortunately but you know I like getting my paychecks yes Raven I like getting my paychecks and bringing you treats <laughs> okay three double crochet oh, if you guys can see what I'm doing I'm trying to stay in frame here I'm going to skip two stitches yarn over and then into this third one do three more double crochets one two And three. Real. Real. Okay. So we got one double crochet cluster. Skip two. Three double crochet. Skip two. Three double crochet. And I'm trying to remember if it's this one. We're gonna do one more. I think we're gonna do one more. Okay, we are going to now chain two for the corner. One, two. And then as you know, in each corner of the granny square, there are six double crochets worked into that same stitch with the chain two in between. So we just chain two and now we're going to double crochet three more times in that same space where we just did those last three double crochet right there in that same stitch alrighty so now we are going to yarn over skip these next two chains and do three more double crochets in the next space We are going to yarn over. We've done those three double crochets, so yarn over, skip two, um, skip two stitches, and then work a double crochet into this next one. Work three double crochet in that same chain, that same stitch. Okay, repeat, going to yarn over, skip two stitches, work a double crochet into the third one, three times in that same stitch. Okay. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Here's our corner. We are going to 
Oh, get some yarn slack first so I don't keep running out. Chain two, <clears throat> three more double crochet in that same corner stitch. There's two double crochet and three. Okay, yarn over, skip two chains, work a double crochet into the third chain, third stitch, I keep getting those two mixed up, three double crochet, okay, yarn over, skip two stitches, work a double crochet into the next, real, honey bunny, Okay. Make sure you're going back and checking your work, making sure you're not doing too many clusters before doing your next corner. That's also what I'm trying to determine. This is looking so pretty. So we got a corner, there's a cluster, there's a cluster, there's the next corner. So we have a corner to do here. We're coming up to this next corner here. Let's see. Okay, one, two. Okay, so we'll yarn over, skip two uh, stitches, work a cluster double crochet in this next one, and then from there we're going to start our corner. Ugh, before I get all wrapped up here. Oops. Okay, stitch. There we go. Sorry guys, I'm moving all over the place trying to keep this yarn in order. Let's see. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, this is our corner. We're going to do chain two. And do three more double crochet in that corner. One, two, three. Yarn over, skip two stitches, and to the third one, do three more double crochet. If I can get in there. There we go. When you are doing your single crochets around the elastic tie, by the way, try not to make them too tight so that way when you're doing your first round of granny clusters it's not too difficult for your hook to go into like mine just was so okay round, uh, skip two stitches work another cluster into the next one two three double crochets is your cluster Um, let me see, let me check my work, let me make sure I'm oriented right and I know where I'm at. Okay, so from the very start we got one double crochet cluster, we chained three, and then did two double crochet, we skipped two chains, skipped two stitches, and then did another cluster of three granny, three um, double crochets, skipped two stitches, cluster your corner, chain two, cluster, so then we um, have two more clusters in the middle of this next corner. And then we have our cluster is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, corner cluster. Two more individual clusters in the middle. Another corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Two more clusters. Now I'm going to skip two and I'm going to do a complete corner cluster right here. So yarn over, skip two. And go into that third stitch and do my cluster of three double crochet. Three double crochet. Chain 
chain two and three double crochet. Three double crochet. And then there's our other corner cluster. We've got our two individual clusters there in the middle. I'm now going to find the top of that chain three. Without even yarning over, I'm just going to go directly into it. And I'm going to slip stitch. Pull up a loop so I don't lose my stitches. So it's kind of hard to tell because the, the band is in a circle and it's kind of pulling everything tight. But this is what your corner, your first round should look like. You've got four corners and two separate clusters of three double crochets in between each corner. It's cute, right? And it looks like a little picture frame. So from, the, from this point on, I'm gonna do two rows of each color. Um, what I'm going to do from this point here is I'm going to chain three, do two double crochets. I'm probably just going to flip my work because this is a solid color and to me it makes it reversible and um, I'm going to have to weave that in a little bit better. That's okay. Um, when I do when I would do granny squares with solid colors, I flip my work back and forth. Each time I complete a row, I flip it the other way so that way it's a reversible and the stitches look great on both sides. If I'm working with a variegated yarn or a self-striping yarn, I just keep going the same way all the way around so that way the color striping looks better and you don't see that cut going diagonally up one corner of the blanket where I would flip my work every time because I like to end at the corner. I did do this a little differently. Normally I start here in the corner. I do one half of the corner and then I go all the way around. I do my last cluster of, the, of that um, first corner and then I end right here in the corner. I do one chain and, and then I single crochet into the top of the chain three. To me, it just gives it a cleaner look. I've watched lots of tutorials on how to do granny squares, and um, I can recommend um, the best podcaster that I learned from for me. Um, it's not best for everybody, because everyone's different, everyone learns differently, but my favorite podcaster that um, did a great job on the granny square was Krista at the Secret Yarnery. She's widely known. If you know me, then you probably know her too. She's been here a lot longer than I have doing this stuff and she's great. She's got tutorials on just about anything. So I'm gonna do one more, more round with you. I'm gonna do half of this round and kind of show you how what I would do to start in the middle here. Also I'm flipping my work. So this is the front of the work where I just I just slip stitched into. I'm going to go ahead and chain three and then I'm going to immediately just flip my work and then yarn over and do two double crochet right here in this space. I don't chain one or, or do anything to space over. I immediately just jump into the next space. Pretty much work in our clusters and all of these little spaces here. Now you can chain one and jump over if you prefer, but you don't have to. I think it saves more yarn not doing it and it saves a little tiny bit of extra time and gets the project done a little quicker but it's your preference that's personal preference so here I'm at a corner so I need to chain two to go around that corner and do one more cluster of double crochets to complete this corner Chanel yarn really likes to curl up but this is so soft you could hand wash this and lay it flat to dry and it won't take very long to dry it at all Get some more yarn here, and I really hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm on my couch in the front of the window instead of in my dining area. That's why the lighting looks a little bit different because normally I have those yellow fluorescent light bulbs for light. It might help if I turn this a little bit. Okay, so not chaining or anything, I'm just working another cluster into this next space over. Oops, keep going. OK, 
Okay, I lost my stitch. Let's try that again. Working on my cluster here. Okay. Work my next cluster into the next space. Get some more yarn slack here. If you haven't gathered up your products and accessories for this um, project, you are also, um, what I failed to mention, going to need is a darning needle and, of course, a pair of scissors. And maybe a smaller hook if you need help getting into your stitches as, as maybe you're a beginner and you're learning how to crochet. But this is super easy to do for beginners. It's um, all you need to know is pretty much your single crochets, your slip stitches, and your double crochets. Here I'm at the corner. So I just did three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. We'll just complete the whole row. Whole row. And then since I'm already at 26 minutes, I'm going to show you how to do the border in the next video. Very next video. But I thought you guys would want to know how to start this so that you guys can do the whole thing. If you need a border tutorial, Chris at the Secret Yarnery has a ton. A ton. She is like the queen on YouTube, in my opinion, on how to do borders for anything. She's great for um, creating, designing borders for like certain types of stitch multiples, depending on the stitch that you used. All you have to do is go to your search engine bar at the top on uh, YouTube's website or your app, whatever you're using. Just go to the search engine bar and type in Krista or type in um, Type in Crochet Border, The Secret Yarnery, and you'll have tons of options on her channel pop up. And just, just a little side tip for you. I use Krista's channel as a reference for just about everything. See, I'm not, not paying attention here, and I did a stitch in between the clusters. Okay, so there's my corner. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet will always be your corner. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One, two, three. Okay, I can move on. One, two, three. Oh, oh I'll go ahead and show you how to change color too since I'm almost there. I think I still have some time left on this video. If I don't, I'll show you in the very next video how to change color with this exact same piece. This yarn is so soft. I really like Premier Chanel. You know how some Chanel yarns kind of snag and break a little bit? I do a test on the ball of yarn in the store. I grab the very tip, the end of the yarn I can find, and I pull out, I don't know, a couple of inches, and I pull the end of the tail off, maybe an inch down, just so I'm not wasting any yarn, and I, I, I pull and tug on it, and if it breaks, I don't buy it. If it doesn't break, I will buy some. I tested this one in the Dollar Tree store, it did not break. So I was really happy with that. If you order Chanel online, buy one skein and test that before buying more. That will save you money in the long run. Let's see, where am I at here? I'm just past my corner. Nope, I'm at my corner right now. Okay. I, I feel like I skipped a corner. Yep. Okay, I have to go back and do this one. <laughs> Always check your work before you end a row. So yeah, this is called frogging, because we're ripping it, rip it, rip it, rip it. It's called frogging. So I'm going to redo this corner, and I'm going to come back in the next video 
and show you guys how to change color, okay? Meet me in the next video so you guys will see the border too. all over the place. Okay, next video guys, I'm going to show you everything else. Bye-bye.